Herein lies the tale. A tale of a computer that started having problems. And it just got worse from there. Oh hey, it's Rob. And uh, I've been trying to put this video together for quite a while. Um, my computer overheated. This was well over a month ago now. And uh, I decided to try and fix it. I thought it would be simple. It wasn't. Now, um, I do have it operating again. and. I had originally started cutting this video on my laptop, but my laptop was way, way too underpowered to be able to handle it. So now I have the machine back and sort of limping along. Um, and I'm going to try and edit the video and put it together and see if I can get it done. Hopefully I can get it out there and uh, we'll have something for you. So I'm gonna give it a shot. This has been a tremendous pain in the butt and there may be some strong language used in this video, just to be warned. So today I am working on the main computer, the one that uh, was overheating. Today I'm going to be doing a CPU swap. Um, I replaced the cooling system and that had no effect whatsoever, so my second try here is to replace the CPU because it's possible that the CPU overheated enough to become damaged and separate from the heat shield on it and get it to a point where it can no longer cool with a, uh, the cooling system that I have. So right now I have this on the back side because this is part of the system that holds the cooler on. And I want to tape this down so that it doesn't come off when I remove the cooler. <laughs> Now, I did get this, which is a uh, quite nice thermal paste kit. Uh, it comes with a stencil so that you can put on the correct amount of thermal paste onto the cold plate, which uh, is going to be a little difficult because I'm going to have to uh, put it on upside down. I suppose I might actually unplug it from the other side and pass that through. I think I will do that. Well, this is turning into a motherboard swap as well. Uh, I just noticed that I have some bent pins on the socket. So uh, it's going to be a little bit more work than I had anticipated, but I do have a motherboard. So uh, it's swapping time. But the first thing I want to do before I start disconnecting everything is to take pictures and um, make sure that I have pictures of where all the connections go before I start, <laughs> you know, disconnecting so that I can make sure that everything is back in place when I reconnect it.
Okay, so this is the part. I open up the CPU box. So this is a step up from the previous processor. Uh, it is still a core i9, but this one is uh, 10 cores as opposed to 8 and has a slightly higher CPU speed. The price difference was almost nothing. I mean, this computer is, you know, a couple years old, so... Uh, I want to make sure that the orientation is correct. So I've got a little pointy arrow down in this corner. And we very carefully set it in. go. This does pop out intentionally, so if you've never installed a CPU before, it's a bit of a weird thing. I'm cleaning this with some isopropyl alcohol. And there are a couple of small imperfections on here. That one is looks like it's a little Small gouge. It's kind of hard to tell, but it is about as clean as I'm going to be able to get it. So now I'm going to try and put this. It's got this little sticky back. And we want to try and mount it on these holes. So to put a bead of thermal paste across it here. And we'll use the spreader yep. oh, that wasn't very good was it? The videos make this look really easy. I 
All right, that is sufficient. And we'll peel this off. And we do have a nice square of relatively evenly applied um, There we go. through the handy dandy firewall blister pack thingy and we'll make sure that the cooling fan is plugged in or the cooling pump is plugged in believe that is everything reconnected. I hope so. And yes, I did put the case back together. Uh, I did this because I really need to carry it downstairs and hook it up down there uh, because that's where everything is. And I didn't really want to try and do it in pieces. So I know I'll probably have to take it apart again and try and fix something else. But uh, for right now, I just put it back together to make it easier to carry. So one of the things I discovered was uh, that the there's an SSD drive in the computer. And I, uh, I missed it the first time around because it was underneath a heatsink. So I, uh, I did find it and I replaced it, uh, but because I replaced the motherboard, uh, the motherboard doesn't recognize the SSD drive, or NVMe, I suppose, I just whatever you call it. It's, a, it's an M.2, um, and it's, well, I'm trying to figure out how to get the motherboard to recognize it, so I'm now in the BIOS settings, and uh, it turns out that the instructions for it are really hard to find. So this is the old motherboard, and this is the uh, M2.1 slot, so there's dot .1, dot .2, and dot .3. And this is where the uh, the NVMe RAM, or, or NVMe flash, whatever you call it, NVMe hard drive was. Um, so I was able to get it out, put it in the new one, and now I'm at the point where I am trying to uh, get it enabled. I know this is cumbersome. I would really like to have an HDMI recorder going right now, but I don't. So setting it to, okay, I'm going to turn on the advanced mode. Uh, st okay. And this is different. So I'm going to try and turn this on and see what happens. It's not recognizing the M.2 port. So, M.2.1 is marked as not present. 
So I'm trying to figure out how to get this to recognize M2.1. So if I can figure this out, I will, uh, I will let you know. Well, indeed, I discovered the problem. If you uh, can read that, it says, enable M2.1 with 11th gen Intel Core processors i5 above. <clears throat> well, I thought that meant that if you have <laughs> a processor and it was above an i5, uh, you would have to enable M2.1, and I couldn't find out how to enable M2.1. What I discovered is that I got a 10th gen Core i9 processor, meaning that it does not have the M2.1 lanes on the processor to be able to talk to that particular slot. So right now I've moved the SSD or the, the NVMe disk to M2.3 because that was the one that was open. And I'm going to try and boot this and see if it recognizes that that is an actual drive. <clears throat> so here we go. <sighs> yeah, we're trying. Hmm, okay. That is not working. Uh, of course, it helps if you plug in the uh, power to the GPU. <clears throat> All right, so it does boot. So I can use it this way, or I can get an 11th gen processor. <sighs> decisions, decisions. So one of the things that I noticed when I had this set up and running is that it was throwing <laughs> so one of the things that I noticed when I was running this uh, with a new processor new motherboard and new cooler is that it was still throwing the overheat warning and the only thing that I didn't change in all of that is the mounting for the CPU cooler to the CPU. So I'm thinking that maybe the mounting bracket that was used from the original, uh, original assembly may have fatigued and is not holding the cooler to the CPU with enough force to provide the thermal transfer. So I'm going to change the CPU mounting and see if that makes it so that it doesn't overheat. Because that's what started this whole thing. <sighs> yeah, I might also replace the fans in the front with different fans just to see if that does anything. But yeah, we'll give it a shot. What's the worst that can happen is I have a CPU that is still overheating. Now, as part of this, I'm going to be replacing the CPU with the uh, original CPU because that one actually does recognize the M.1 or M2.1 slot, uh, which means I'm going to have to redo the thermal paste. But, you know, that's not like I can't do that. All right, so this retention piece on the back, I think, may be the culprit. Uh, it's made of plastic, and I think, given the amount of heat and that it can deform and perhaps not maintain the tension that it needs. 
So this piece is the one that's going on the back. Uh, yeah, okay. So a little spider, spidery thing there. And um, we'll use these to install it. Not entirely sure how this is going to go, but uh, I guess we'll find out. Well, it took a bit of wrangling, but I have it attached and it is down as tight as I can get it. It's actually, I think, tighter than, uh, tighter than it was, so it's pressing harder against that CPU. You know, it's not damaging the motherboard or anything because it does have the spreader in the frame. So uh, I'm going to hook it up again and fire it up and see if it's any better. Overheating again. Why is it overheating? Why is it overheating? I'm going to give up for now. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do yet. Um, for some reason it's it's overheating. I put the old CPU back in, that may be part of it, uh, but I'm gonna have to wait for a new CPU and possibly I might go with a three bay cooler. I don't know, this is, I, I've replaced the processor, the motherboard, and the cooler. I, there's not much left that it could be. I, it's, I don't know what it is. I hate being stumped. All right. Until I get the new processor, I'm going to have to call this one. So uh, wish me luck, and I'll see you guys later. Well, I'm back on the floor again. Um, I've got a new thing that I'm working on here. Well, that's still the computer cooling, but I got a 360 millimeter, a three bay radiator fan from uh, NZXT. It's got more cooling power. Um, I'm also taking the case apart a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to be doing some additional cleaning and looking at how I'm going to mount this. And hopefully this will take care of the cooling issue. And I hope that I haven't managed to completely <clears throat> trash my Windows install, but I guess we will find out. Here I've got most of the fans in the cooling system out of the case. Um, in looking at it, the front of the case here has some obstructions where the fans go. I'm not overly enthused about that. The top has much better airflow, and I think it's going to be the best shot for the three bay cooler. So I'll be putting it up there along with the new fans, and I'll probably put some additional fans on the uh, on the front here. I don't know if I'm going to use, I'm not sure which fans I'm going to use yet. I'll probably be reusing some of the system fans here, but uh, right now just getting everything out of the way to be able to put the new cooler in is kind of the, the first step. Well, I kind of like this mounting hardware. Uh, it's significantly more, uh, better labeled than the uh, MSI uh, mounting hardware was. So I've got the back plate in and I've got the LGA 1200 risers in. They are loose, but it looks like they're designed to be that loose. So on to the next step. Um, it seems that I am uh, in demand. <coughs> Maybe they're finally giving me a chance to uh, actually do something here. It's been rather difficult with these two tonight. They're uh, both being extremely needy. Uh, so I am having to take breaks like, about every 20 minutes. You know, take a 20 minute break every 20 minutes. It adds up. Uh, yeah, okay. Got the new processor installed. Um, 
I'm about to mount the fans to the radiator and then the radiator in the case. Yay! All right, the temperature seems to be doing well. Uh, looks like it's booting up. We'll see how this goes. We have booted into Windows. The temperature is holding. Got to go through this process. Well, it looks like this might have worked. I'm still being very hopeful, but for right now, uh, the temperature is holding at a nice 24 degrees Celsius. Um, it's going through a reboot process. It's you know since I changed the processor and the motherboard, um, it's got to do reconfiguring and all that fun stuff. So. Uh, letting it go through that process, basically rebuilding Windows, I think. And uh, here's hoping. I mean, if this is gonna, if this is gonna work. I mean, if if this fixes the overheat problem, I'll be very, very happy. <clears throat> There's still some connectors that I need to get uh, adapters. There's a, uh, I need to get a. Uh, old hard drive 4 pin to SATA additional thing for the for the lights and all that and there's a 4 pin connector on the new cooler that I'm not entirely sure what it is so I'm going to look that up and figure out what that is but I think I think we might have got it I don't know we'll find out for sure but fingers crossed So what's left is um, I have this running right now, but it's running off of the wrong drive. Uh, I do have a new NVMe RAM ordered, or NV yeah, well, NVMe hard drive ordered uh, that should be coming here this weekend. So I'm going to be hopefully be putting that in and then reinstalling Windows uh, from the ground up, going through all that process again, but hopefully having it running on the correct drive so that I have the performance that I'm looking for and uh, I'm back to operating normally. Uh, the NZXT cooler has been doing tremendously. I've been very happy with it. I think that's something I'm going to probably be sticking with going forward. Um, I don't know. It's I don't know how many more of these systems I'm going to build. I do have one more that I do have that's an older machine that I'm rebuilding. Um, haven't figured out what I'm going to do with that yet, but that's not critical. So. I don't know how soon that's going to happen, if it's gonna, even going to happen. It just, it's way down on the priority list right now. Anyway, hopefully get more done. Uh, I've got more things that I need to do. This has been a tremendous week. Uh, it's been a tremendous few weeks um, overloaded with life. So, all right. I will talk to you guys later. See ya. Oh, hi. It's Rob. And the dogs. Hi, sissy. I... Hi. Yes. Hi. I'm at dog height. Uh, okay. Why am I on the floor, you might ask? Well, aside from, you know, the dogs wanting attention. Uh, because this is where my computer is right now. <clears throat> I have it on the floor because I'm trying to troubleshoot it. They don't get enough attention. Would you like to say hi to everybody? Hmm? Would you like to say hi to everybody? Or would you just like me to pet you? Hmm? That's what I thought. Okay. Okay.
Let's cook. Thank you, boy. I love you. Mm -hmm. I do. You silly girl. You girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. Why do that? <laughs>